Alright, welcome back. Uh, we This is part 2 yeah, of chapter 5. Uh, basic time value of money. Yeah? Alright, we have looked at uh, this slide yeah, uh, in the last clip. Let's move on to the next slide. Okay, let me just bring this down slightly so that you can see the full screen. Yeah? Alright. Now, we start with the first key concept in this clip, yeah, which is the future value. Yeah? Now, suppose you invest, we take an example here, suppose you invest $1,000 for one year at 5% per year. What is the future value yeah, in one year? Right? So, that's the question. Yeah? So, the future value will include the interest that you earn. Yeah? So, the interest is computed this way, the principal, $1,000 multiplied by 5%, yeah? 5% will be paid as interest every year, yeah? per year, yeah? or per period, that's for 1000 multiplied by 5%, 5% is 0 0.05, okay, so you get $50, this is the interest amount, yeah? this is interest amount, 5% is the interest rate, alright, now the value in one year will include both the principal which is 1000 plus the interest. Yeah, interest is what you add yeah, from the investment, what the, the investment yields this yeah, interest. Returns, yeah, this is also known as the return. Yeah. Therefore, principal plus interest will be $1000 plus the $50 interest, you get 1050 yeah. So the future value actually can be computed this way, yeah, the principal plus the interest, yeah, this principal 1, plus the interest rate multiplied by the principal, which is the interest. Okay, therefore it is 1000 multiplied by 1 plus 5% or 0 0.05. Yeah, so you get 1050. Alright, so therefore uh, that is how you compute yeah, the future value. The value of your investment one year from now, if uh, you invest $1000 now, and you earn an interest rate of 5% per year. Yeah? Note that in this problem, there are four elements. Three of the elements are known, and one element is not known. Yeah? What are the three elements that are known? The known elements are first, the present value, PV, yeah? $1,000. This is the cash flow now that you invest. Okay, and then the second element that is known is the interest rate, 5% per year, this is known. Alright, then the third element is the term, the year, one year is known. Yeah? So you invest for one year, alright. Now what is unknown, the future value, the question will tell you the unknown. Yeah? What is the future value in one year? So this is the unknown element, the fourth element is not known. Three elements are known, present value. Interest, present value, interest, and the term. Yeah, it's known. The future value is not known. Yeah? So you can solve it this way. Now let's extend this example a bit more. Yeah? Suppose you leave the money in for another year. That means you uh, will leave the investment for two years. Yeah? You invest for two years rather than one year as above. Then how much will you have two years from now? Yeah? After two years. The future value at the end of the second year. How much will you have? So the same method, you can use this method here. This is the principal multiplied by 1 plus the interest rate. Now here, the principal is this. Yeah? No, this yeah? The principal is this. This is the whole principal now. Yeah? It's not 1000 because at the end of the first year, your money will be 1050. You can replace this as 1050. Yeah? Multiplied by 1 plus 5%. Okay? But 1050 is exactly this, 1000 multiplied by 1 plus uh, the 5%, yeah? Therefore, you can summarize this. If this is 1.05 multiplied by 1.05, this is 1.05 square, yeah? So you can write it this way, and yeah? The future value at the end of year 2 will be 1000 multiplied by 1 plus 5% raised to the power of 2, yeah? Now, this is raised to the power of 2, not the whole thing, yeah? Know that, yeah? So 1 plus 5% is raised to the power of 2. So you get this 1102.50. Yeah? So the idea here is yeah, you earn interest. Yeah? Interest is earned on the increased principal because the first year the principal is no more 
1000. 1000 is the principal amount at time 0. Now, present time. Yeah? 1050 will be the value yeah? or the principal value of the principal at the end of the first year. Okay, and the value of the principal at the end of the second year will be this much, yeah? 1102.50. So, when you compute, yeah, you take the present, uh, the principal value, yeah, the pr principal value, value of the principal at the end of the previous year, multiplied by 1 plus the interest rate. Yeah? So, you get the uh, future value yeah, at the end of the particular period. So, interest uh, is uh, earned on the increased principal, yeah? the means principal plus all previously earned interest. This is called compound interest. So compound interest allows you to earn interest on interest, not only interest on principal. Yeah? So that is what we mean by compound interest. Okay, now let's move on to the next slide. Yeah? Alright, so we can write this as a formula. Yeah? So remember, when we solve this problem, there are two ways yeah, of solving this problem. One is using the formula. This is a formula given in the book, but this is the uh, formula that I would like to show you here. Yeah? This future value N stands for end of period N. Yeah? Future value at end of period N, this subscript N, N uh, indicates that yeah? the future value at the end of period N is equals to the present value at time 0, okay, present value at time 0, multiplied by 1 plus R, R is the interest rate, interest rate per period, okay, all this, yeah, this 1 plus R, not whole thing, yeah, but 1 plus R, this is raised to the power of N, okay, so that is the formula for future value, yeah, so this formula is quite straightforward, this is derived from the previous slide, yeah, this is 1000, remember, that's the present value, the amount that you deposit, Multiplied by 1 plus 5% is the interest rate, then raised to the power of 2, yeah, if you want to determine the future value at the end of year, uh, year 2. Alright, yeah? With that, yeah, so this uh, FV, FVN stands for future value at the end of year N. PVO, okay, stands for the present value at time 0. R is a period interest rate expressed as a decimal. You can also use a percentage, yeah? not necessarily only decimal, but uh, when you key into the uh, calculator, the calculator will assume, yeah? will convert this to decimal before it does the computation. Alright, and then T, <coughs> the book uses T, I prefer using N, yeah? number of periods. Okay, T refers to time. Okay, but uh, we express time in number of times, yeah? interest is compounded, yeah? therefore it is better to uh, refer to this as number of periods, yeah? and therefore we use N, yeah? I prefer using N, even though the book uses T. Yeah? Alright, then uh, this 1 plus R, okay? this, this 1 plus R uh, uh, expression yeah? can be uh, called this way, yeah? This is interest rate factor. When it's only R, then it's interest rate. Yeah? But when you add 1 to R, then become, it becomes interest rate factor. Now, if you raise this to the power of the factor, yeah? this, this interest rate factor, if you raise this to the power of T or N, then it becomes future value interest factor. Okay, so this formula can also be written this way. Yeah? Future value at the end of year N or end of period N is equals to PV, present value at time 0 now, multiplied by, this is FVIF, which is future value interest factor, given R or interest rate R percent, and N stands for number of period, N, N term, yeah, or number of periods. So this FVIF, future value interest factor, this can be taken from the table. Yeah? This future value interest factor is exactly the same as this element here, this component. Yeah? So this future value interest factor can be taken from the time value of money table yeah, at the end of your textbook. Yeah? This refers to the first appendix. Yeah? Appendix uh, table A1, yeah? future value interest factor. 
Okay, so we'll look at this a bit later when we look at an example. Yeah, let's move on. Now, when uh, I explained about compound interest earlier, yeah? compound interest allows one to earn interest on interest. Okay, but simple interest only allows the uh, investment yeah? or the investor to earn interest on the original principal. So this compound interest allows you to earn interest not only on the original principal but also on the previously earned interest. Alright, and consider this example. The future value of simple interest will be this yeah, for two years. 1,000, that is the principal, plus interest for the first year, plus again another interest for the second year. If this is simple interest, yeah, because interest on the second year will also be interest on the same principal. Okay, you, you cannot increase the principal. The principal is always uh, constant. Yeah? It does not increase with time. Yeah? Or it is not, uh, the interest is not added to the principal. Okay, it's not added. Yeah? It's only added at the end. Yeah? So you earn interest on the original principal only. Therefore, with simple interest, you get 1,100. Yeah? But with compound interest, we just computed this in the previous slide. Okay, so it was 1102.50. The difference clearly is 2 ringgit or $2.50. Yeah? Now, this $2.50 $2 comes from the interest of 5% on the amount, 5% interest rate on the interest earned in the first year. Okay, so therefore you earn 2 ringgit or $2.50. Uh, interest on interest, yeah. This interest on the first year interest. Okay, so this is what we mean by compound interest, yeah. So compound interest for the investor is always better than simple interest. Okay, for the borrower, simple interest is better because you pay less, yeah. But for investor, compound interest is better. Other things being equal, yeah. Uh, it's better because you earn interest on uh, uh, earn interest yeah uh, in the earlier period. Yeah? Therefore, this is uh, the difference yeah as you can see here. This is the future value using compound interest. We have seen this formula, but this is not uh, you have not seen this before. Yeah? This is the future value with simple interest. Okay, that means you take the interest rate first, you multiply with the number of periods, for example, here two in two periods or two years, five percent multiplied by two, therefore, this is ten percent. Ten percent plus one, it's one point one multiplied with one thousand, you get one thousand one hundred. Yeah? So it's the same, yeah. Yeah, so this can be extended, you can take any number of periods or any interest rate. Yeah? So this is the formula for interest rate, this is the formula for compound interest, yeah. Simple interest, yeah. This simple interest is compound interest. Now, compound interest e is equal to the simple interest only for the first period. Okay, for the second period onwards, then compound interest will be greater, yeah. Or the future value with compound interest will be greater, provided that the interest rate is positive. Okay, if the interest rate is negative, then it's a different um, story altogether, yeah. But if the uh, interest rate is positive, okay, then the compound interest yeah, will be higher. The future value of compound interest will be higher yeah, than the uh, future value of simple interest. Okay, and this will be higher uh, over a longer period of time. Yeah. This compound interest will be equal to the simple interest only for the first period. For, from the second period onwards, compound interest will be greater. Okay, so that's the idea behind this. Okay, we can use the calculator. I'll show you how this calculator, the financial calculator is used. This calculator is not the, the normal calculator. Yeah? This is the financial calculator. We'll see that in a moment yeah, later. Right, let's look at this example. Yeah? So this example, we'll introduce this example here and we'll look at uh, the solution yeah, in the next clip. Yeah? Because this clip is coming to an end. Okay, suppose you invest the same yeah, amount, 1,000, for 5 years. How much would you have? That's the question here. Yeah? Let's look at the solution in the next slide.